I think most of them are in. Right on. You have a really fast trigger press. You're On second thought, I think I will do a short review, you've heard that before, right? On the Peltor Military Soundtrap Hearing Protectors. Hello again, this is Nut and Fancy. If you found this video via Google or whatever, I'm a gear reviewer of knives, guns, all kinds of stuff that I dig that is useful in my philosophies of use. And judging from the amount of airtime I've given these Peltors, you would probably think I would love them as well, right? Lots and lots of hours testing them. They've been in the project for well over a year and a half. I think maybe two years now. I don't even keep track. Um, but I got to tell you, they're not super recommended by me. Uh, I think Peltor makes a lot of great stuff. Um, but in comparison to the, con uh, the competition out there for the price levels you're going to pay, the Peltor Military Soundtrap, I don't know. Maybe not the best, not the best choice. I'm going to tell you why, why right now. Jumping into ergonomics. Um, I can't say anything about about that comfort. Great comfort level, as I have come to expect from pretty much most Peltor hearing protectors, the non-electronic varieties as well. Stays on the head, doesn't wiggle around. The ear cups fit most people's ears, you know. Um, transport is a piece of cake, and it folds very compactly, just like that, into a ball, pretty much. And I will tell you this right now that this military soundtrap model is very similar, my understanding, to the Tactical 6. The difference being is this, this has tie-ins for two-way comms. Okay, and another little tidbit of information, this set of hearing protectors is the same as their, I believe it's called the Shotgunners model, right here. Mm -hmm. I've been using that for a long time. This is, of course, just standard hearing protectors, not electronic variety, and they're identical. Granted, these are branded with AO Safety logo on them, but they're made by Peltor, and AO Safety just markets them. Um, these are great little hearing protectors. If you use them with interior foam plugs, they work great, um, but you won't get any amplification of sound like you should be getting with the military sound traps, okay? Stock interface, that is, do you have any interferences with your gun stock? Um, I would say it's excellent. The answer is no. It, these are it's about as low profile as you can get. See that, how it contours in specifically so you don't have an interface or an interference. Um, great job on that, Peltor. The controls, though, is where the whole package kind of starts going south. I mean, in a bad way. Uh, I mentioned this in the Howard Light Impact Sports Electronic Muff Review. Man, that's a lot of words. Um, they have a single control. The Peltors do not. They have dual controls. Some of you guys out there will say, well, I need dual controls, but I, I really think most people don't. It's just more complexity. It's more nonsense that you have to deal with. Uh, I do not like the controls on the Peltor. Um, and also, this is another negative thing. The detent is not that positive. So many times, and I repeat many times, I've stowed these in the shooting bag only to find sigh that they have turned on either one side or another and now the battery's depleted because they don't have an auto shut off jumping down to sound management uh huh I mean if they didn't have an auto shut off whatever but make that a really positive decent detent it shouldn't take I don't know some force to get it out there what I have ended up doing and you may have seen this on camera is I actually run some gorilla tape on these and tape the knobs down while they're being you know transported so that I have a good battery when it's time to shoot yeah, I don't like the controls on it. I love the color. Color's OD. You know, you know I love the ODs, the tans, all that tactical stuff. Yeah, if you want to use them in a tactical environment, you could probably do that. You know, especially with a tie-in right here. I, and I don't know what plug that fits. I'm sure there's some comm radios, whatever, standard two-way plug that, that fits. I'll annotate the weight of what they weigh. They're lightweight and, again, comfortable and very stable. No hits on that whatsoever. Sound management. The reaction time, very quick. I didn't find that it let any sounds through that I could notice. Um, so it's doing its job the way it's supposed to do it, and I wouldn't expect anything less from Peltor, which is generally a quality company, right? Attenuation level is n unimpressive, 20 decibels. And like I said in the Impact Sports review, 
that is more of a function of ear cup design than anything, right? It's not really a function of the electronics. Now, granted, if electronics are screwed up and they're letting sounds through when they're not shutting off, that's a different issue. What I'm talking about here is the ear cup design. Um, the padding is okay, not super deep, but the ear cup is very shallow, as you can see, and it has a medium amount of foam in it. Therefore, you're going to get about a 20 dB attenuation, and that's what should be expected when you get a pair of earmuffs. This trim. Uh, let me uh, let me tell you this though, and I forgot to, I forgot the name when I was doing the Howard Light review. The ones I was thinking of is the Peltor Ultimate Tens. Like if I'm shooting heavy duty rifles for extended amounts of time, um, I'll slam on a pair of these if I can work them with the stock. As you can see, the air cup design on these is very deep. These are serious hearing protectors, as as serious as you can find generally. Thirty is your noise reduction rating. Okay, and again, if we pop these open, we look, we have a deeper padding, okay, on that ear cup to accommodate shooter's glasses. What you don't want is that ear padding um, to come away from your ear and bust that seal because that's how sound gets in. And it has deeper foam cushioning, you know, thicker plastic. Of course, it's kind of common sense. It's going to let less sound in. This is more trim. Okay, um, so attenuation, not really awesome. I run plugs with it like I think I've mentioned before. The volume level is where it, it again is another negative hit on the Peltors. It's very low. I don't find that it goes up very high and that's bad. I think every electronic mu muff <laughs> can't speak um, should go higher you know because if you do want to run fo foam plugs in it you know give the user an option to do that. Uh, I did not however notice any feedback like I did in the Howard Lights. In other words if I crank these to full loud do I get any whining or feedback no I suspect the electronics in the Peltors are actually probably a little bit higher quality than the impact sports the problem is they're just not uh, tuned up good enough at least for my needs power hmm I'll tell you this is where it really gets screwed up the whole formula of the sound traps I hate uh, I said in the Howard Light review by the way that this has one battery per ear cup I was wrong it's actually two two AAA batteries per ear cup all right, this is me trying to get into ear cup to replace the, the battery. All right, you see how what a hassle that is? I made mention of this in the other review. There's your batteries right there. Okay, you can see that is not convenient. And now, the worst part is, there, well, not, there's all kinds of worst parts. They're in each ear cup, so I have four, not two batteries. And then I've got to work in getting this ear cup back on and having it snap in the channel, and that's a hassle. I don't know, maybe some guys that have them are a lot better at it than I am. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I wrestle with it every time and it's just, I dread it. It's just a pain in the butt. Alright, so uh, too many batteries. They're in each ear cup. Let me pop that in. I got lucky this time. It popped right in that time. Um, and I think that might be another issue too is because oftentimes I'm shooting where it's about, you know, 25 degrees outside where this plastic is not soft like it is here at room temperature and it does not pop in easily. You gotta mess around with it. Huh, interesting stuff that you learn out in, in I don't know, the real real world. No auto shutdown either. If you leave these on, of course you're gonna come back. There's no battery power. That sucks. Battery life is diminished. It's only 200 hours rated. I find it to be much less. Uh, I'm changing batteries in the sound traps all the time. Um, auxiliary, auxiliary input, in, in some ways, Guys may look at and go, well, that's good. That's a standard, you know, two-way comm jack. I think it's worse. I'd rather have what the Howard Lights have on it for general use. I'm not talking LE or heavy-duty military use, by the way. I'm talking mostly civilian use here. That's more versatile, in my opinion. Durability, I would say, is pretty good. I mean, we abuse these things. I've loaned them to other people. They're, it's excellent. I can't fault it. And the water resistance, you know, in rain, snow, it's been good. Value has been okay too. You can get them on sale. I think at, I printed this out like a long time ago. Look how thrash this printout is. <laughs> That's how long I've been wanting to do this review. I was like, I gotta do a hearing protector review one of these times. Forty nine bucks is what they're selling them for back then at Botash Tactical. Um, that's okay, okay price, but I'll tell you what, I would go with the Howard Lights over them. And no, these are not the only two hearing protectors on the market. I know that there's a lot of them out there, but I will tell you this, uh, I've been pretty happy with these. Not so happy with those. This is nothing fancy. We'll see you.